Good morning, everyone. It is an honor to be here with the members of the Congressional Black Caucus, House and Senate, our distinguished chair, Karen Bass, Senator Booker, Senator Harris, the distinguished leader, uh, Democratic leader of the Senate, Mr. Schumer. We are gathered here in Emancipation Hall, aptly named for those who built the Capitol, sadly. Last summer, a number of us, under the leadership of Karen Bass, went to Ghana to observe the 400th anniversary of the first slaves coming across the Atlantic. That tragedy, that tragedy, that horror of history, and then slavery in our own country, and then all of the consequences of that. We are here to observe that pain. We are here to respect the actions of the American people to speak out against that, specifically manifested in police brutality. We are here to honor George Floyd. In a moment, we will have a moment of silence, actually eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence in honor of George Floyd and so many others who lost their lives or were abused by police brutality. Before that, I want to yield to the distinguished leader of the Senate, Mr. Schumer. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you for this profound and important moment before we go forward with our strong and comprehensive legislation. Now, Senate Democrats uh, held a similar moment of silence last week, where we stood for eight minutes and 46 seconds to mark the horrible death of George Floyd. To every one of us, it was excruciating. It seemed an unbearably long amount of time. Felt so, it felt so painful to get even an inkling of how this man and so many other black Americans have suffered for so long. Every American should try to stand in silence for eight minutes and 46 seconds to acknowledge the pain of George Floyd and the pain of racism. When we gather in this grand hall for ceremonies, we usually begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, ending with those three words, justice for all. Today, as we stand in silence, rather than in spoken pledge, let us reflect on those words, justice for all, and what we need to do to make those words actually true in our time for black Americans and all Americans. Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Leader. Uh, before we have our moment of silence, which as you indicated, is a very long time, especially with someone's knee on your neck. Uh, we gather in honor of those Americans and so many others. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Armand Arbery, Botham Jean, Terrence Kutcher, Jordan Davis, Oscar Grant, Philando Castillo, Freddie Gray, Walter Scott, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, any other names, members? Let me do the album. Sean Bell, Jordan Davis, Freddie Gray. Mm -hmm. We'll now, um, well, during the moment of silence, I'm sure that those who have been uh, hurt by all of this won't mind if you shout out names then. For those who wish to, we will now kneel for our moment of silence. We are gathered here in Emancipation Hall aptly named for those who built the that. We are here. We are here. here. We are here. That we have pain. To respect that knee. That we are here to observe <laughs> that pain against <laughs> that. That we are here to manifest it in that pain. That we are here to observe that pain. We are here to pain. We are here see how long it was to have that knee. <laughs> <laughs> See how long it was to have that knee with his neck. You see how long it was to have that knee with his neck. We took a knee have to get the attention of America and bring awareness to the real issue of police brutality. But the reason I don't want to see the white people kneeling right now is because the knee that got the attention of America in this moment that knee wasn't Colin Kaepernick's. It was the knee of that murderer, that thug, that white devil, Derek Chauvin, or whatever the hell his name is, okay? That knee that was on the back of George Floyd's neck, that knee is what has laws changing right now. So when I see white folks kneel, I don't know if they are peacefully protesting the way Colin and a host of others did and still do all around the world, or they are mocking the death of George Floyd. It's better not to have on high heels. <laughs> You see how long it was to have that knee. 
Snack. Thank you all. Thank you all. We'll now proceed to Studio Light for the press conference. Please follow me this way. how long it was to have that knee with his neck. Great. Thank you all. We'll now proceed to Studio A for the press conference. Please follow me this way. The Democrats have planned for Juneteenth. You don't want to see Nancy Pelosi in a public enemy shirt with a black fist out saying fight the power on Juneteenth. You don't want to see Chuck Schumer in a Jackie Robinson baseball jersey screaming out random quotes like, all my life I had to fight. Do you really want to hear Kendrick Lamar, uh, all right, coming from uh, C Capitol Hill on Juneteenth? Look, man, they a few years late take, on, on taking a knee. So don't think for one second Nancy Pelosi not still learning the Millie Rock right now. Okay, nip this pandering in the bud because it's all fun and games until white members of Congress are doing the Cupid shuffle on Juneteenth. Okay, don't think for one second that a member of the CBC isn't teaching white members of Congress the electric slide right now so they can have a Juneteenth video ready. We don't need none of that. As I said before, policy over pandering. Okay, laws, legislation, that's what we need. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, white conda, for never. Please give the Caucasian members of the Congress who are wearing kente cloth and healing the biggest hee-haw. Uh -huh.